Hi everyone, my name is Dhanashree. I'm a senior enterprise advocate at GitHub. Today we'll be talking about transforming your business in a digital world with GitHub. Today, all of you know this, every company is becoming a software company. We've seen this change in the typical tech players, the Ubers, the Lyfts of the world, but we are even seeing this change in the non-traditional tech sectors. For instance, when the pandemic came up, even non-technical industries were affected very badly. All of us remember doing all our banking needs uh, instead of going to ATMs, so doing it on the mobile phones and through the internet. So this just gives us an example of how the rapid acceleration of technology and the need to keep up is helping us with disrupting the industry today. Today, we are seeing three powerful challenges impacting the enterprise's ability to innovate. One, open source is in your supply chain. According to the Open Source Security Risk Assessment Report, 99% of code bases with over 1,000 lines of code include open source components. Now, this is good as it allows your developers to focus on the code that differentiates your business. But this also comes with some inherent risk. Unfortunately, there aren't enough developers to meet the demand that exists for their talents across industries. So third trend we are seeing is the move to cloud infrastructure allows code to be recycled more rapidly, leading to faster iteration and greater innovation through DevSecOps. Unfortunately, the vast majority of organizations are not seeing the full potential of the investment in DevSecOps, and so they are still missing their targets. And this is why the slide shows you the complexity of the tool stack. As you can see, there are too many software tools, uh, environments, programming languages, which makes the journey really difficult to navigate for a software developer. With so many terms being used interchangeably, it's easy to get confused and to know if you're covering the entire code base with what you need. Developers no longer have to know and be proficient only in the tools that is their area of expertise, but they are being asked to become proficient with other tools in the software development lifecycle. So to address these key challenges, you have three key opportunities in front of you. You can improve efficient efficiency by improving uh, by providing a cohesive developer experience to minimize context switching and increase developer productivity. Number two, you have an opportunity to find and remove as many bottlenecks as you can to ship software faster. Understandably, one of the biggest bottlenecks is security. So number three is overlacking a lack of process automation or facilitation of code discovery and reuse make up your third opportunity. Drawing attention to the metrics published in the recent state of the DevOps report, we do see trends in high achieving DevSecOps organizations. They are benefiting from closing gaps and removing existing bottlenecks. They are moving from six months deployments to multiple deployments in a day. Um, lead times from six months to the first from the first commit to the final deploy to less than an hour and faster recovery um, from incidents from days to hours or even minutes. So most of these organizations have realized the opportunities today that we are seeing on these decks. Now, realizing these opportunities is exactly where we can help. We can help improve efficiency by providing a cohesive developer experience by minimizing context switching. We can enable more faster and secure ships without creating additional friction for the developer by shifting security left by providing tools such as Dependabot or GitHub Advanced Security. We can help accelerate software development by focusing on areas of code reuse and automation. And this is where inner sourcing along with GitHub Actions comes into play. So by realizing these three opportunities, you will in turn address the challenges of talent acquisition and retention, open source reuse and governance, and realizing the full potential of your DevSecOps environment. Today, GitHub Enterprise solves the need for a strong developer experience. 
a better developer experience means that you will keep developers focused, engaged, and help them grow, all the while keeping your businesses moving faster and more securely. The heart of GitHub lies in these four buckets, all revolving around solving for that fragmented developer experience. So one of the questions that I often get asked is why GitHub? Why not GitLab or Bitbucket or something else? And what's, you know, the simple answer is we can do it better because we can actually get to see and understand the core sets of functionality at organizations of all scales and sizes. We are the world's largest DevSecOps platform with over 83 million developers using GitHub. Developers trust GitHub to collaborate, test, build, and deploy code. And this includes over 90% of the Fortune Top 100. We are learning from these developers, and we want everyone to benefit from that as well. So here is a quick highlight of the broad range of tooling that we have from planning and source code management all the way through to automation and security. Development environment management and machine learning and artificial intelligence are also feature here. So these are all the offerings we are offering like Copilot. So let's see how we can solve together for these challenges. GitHub has integrated issues and basic project tracking, including a built-in Kanban board with GitHub projects. In fact, you can securely use and bring open source code and best practices to your enterprise projects and increase developer velocity through inner sourcing and build like the best software development teams in the world. Flexibility, security, compliance, and deployment controls make it easy for your teams to use GitHub Enterprise wherever you need it. You can even leverage GitHub Platform to work with issues, pull requests, checks, releases, and more. You can work with the pull requests um, directly from the command line as well. You can even script and customize with GitHub APIs as per your requirements. To give you an example, Shell has embraced an inner source ethos with more than 6,000 repos already on GitHub to boost development, collaboration, and knowledge sharing. GitHub Enterprise not only provides a central hub for inner source projects, but a unified platform for managing DevSecOps through GitHub Actions and Dependabot. GitHub Enterprise provides a holistic environment where developers can excel, teams work together, and projects get delivered. Developers can work together to improve code with pull requests. They can share best practices with actions and communicate and stay in sync with issue tracking and project pages. GitHub Enterprise combines all of the tools that share a common context, reduce context switching from developing code to CI, CD, and automation. Which brings me to the automation piece. Now, the last couple of years, we've expanded our capability set from just being a source code management platform all the way to a complete DevOps automated workflow solution. Imagine that this is the place uh, which is a one-stop shop, and a lot of our customers are seeing this benefit. So you can build your code, you can manage testing, you can manage your binaries, and deploy to them to any environment. GitHub offers you a single place to host both your source code and the binary code with a seamless and integrated login experience. So our offerings work equally well for hosting open source projects and private enterprise projects as well. There are thousands of actions available for you to use for CI, CD, and workflow automation. In fact, when I joined GitHub about a year and a half ago, we had about 6,000 actions on the GitHub Marketplace. Today, we have over 14,000 actions that your teams can leverage. GitHub has made CI, CD open source. Gone are the days of dev leads spending up to six hours for each deployment. GitHub Packages is our platform for hosting and managing packages, including containers and other dependencies. To give you another example, Codespaces is where we start developing uh, faster. Uh, one of, it is one of our latest features. But Codespaces 
reduces the time to set up development environments from hours per week to seconds, powered by a web-based version of Visual Studio Code that is fully integrated into the GitHub developer environment. Synergy is Western Australia's largest energy retailer and generator. GitHub Enterprise uh, was chosen by Synergy because they needed a tool that required less maintenance and would offer cutting edge tooling without the need to set up and manage software. With GitHub Enterprise Cloud, Synergy developers can move faster than ever and dedicate more time and focus to solving customer problems. Synergy, in fact, uses code spaces as well. And Synergy streamlines developer onboarding to 15 seconds rather than the one to two weeks that it took them prior to adopting GitHub. At GitHub, we also set to do application security differently. Our mission is to empower developers to actually fix what they find. So we switch security from being reactive to proactive. We start by natively embedding security findings inside the developer workflow itself. So developers can take action on security alerts as they happen. My colleague Brent will be taking us to a deep dive of GitHub Advanced Security. Now the GitHub difference is that all of these findings that we find here being native, fixing in minutes, trusting by design and being community driven is scaled. So we get the wisdom of millions of developers on our platform and help it to use you and your teams. Now, this is uh, one of the examples that we have from our customers where 3M accelerates research and development using GitHub. So that's it for the presentation. Now let's walk into a demo and see all of these features in real time. So now let's look at how we can use GitHub to collaborate on an upcoming features for a project I'm working on that's an online bookstore. Now, when a developer logs in to their GitHub account and navigates to the main page of their code repository, this is what it would typically look like. For a lot of us who've used GitHub, this UI might look familiar. For those of us who haven't, let's just spend a couple of minutes to see a few things here. As you can see, GitHub um, has surfaced a bunch of insights here. Now we spoke about this, but GitHub started off as a core source code management platform. So you can host all of your code here in repos. And in fact, if your project is currently on Subversion or Mercurial or something else, you can even migrate really easily to uh, leverage GitHub capabilities. Now, remember that repositories can be created using a predefined template, but you can also, um, that template can then be reused across your organization. Now, this, the main page of my repository that you can see, this is a simple Maven project. It's a Java application for an online bookstore. Um, this is how it can, it would look like. Like I was saying, there's a bunch of insights that GitHub is intelligent enough to surface. So over here, you can see all the languages being used within the project, right? This is um, a side benefits that customers tell us is it's easy to get um, people in their teams when they know what languages or what skill sets are needed. Now, most repositories would have a readme.md. And what this does is really helps uh, a new person joining your team or someone from across the organization to understand what this code does. Now, this repository is under our organization called Octodemo. And think of an organization as a security perimeter, if you will, where you could store all of your repositories. Now, this can correspond to your company or business unit or team. And then you can define policies under this organization. So if I actually clicked here for a second, you can see there are all these teams um, that you can create. You can invite people to your organization, you can then uh, add them to teams and use role-based access control to decide who has access to what, okay? Now, coming back, um, imagine that you uh, are a project manager, right? When he or she are starting their day, um, they logged in to their GitHub account. One thing they could do is instead of using another project management tool, which you would have to buy, you can simply click over to the projects tab here within GitHub. 
Now, GitHub is providing um, a lot of templates that you can use. And um, I have a project open here, for instance. It can be, this is, of course, your basic Kanban. It has those three columns about to do, in progress, and done. And I have these cards, which I can move across these columns. So this way, you can track your issues. You can track your pull requests. I can even add some notes here saying adding feature four and create it right here. Now, the best part is this issue, um, this note that I have can be directly converted to an issue and added to this bookstore that we have here. So this is very, very easy for any project manager joining the team. In fact, GitHub uses um, projects ourselves. We have our public roadmap on the projects. Now, the biggest advantage is that you can plan, track, um, and collaborate um, across your code in one centralized place. Now, coming back to our project uh, that we had, imagine that there is a new rating feature that needs to be added. I can easily assign it as a project manager to someone within the team. So that was how you could collaborate across projects. Now, as a developer, I'm working on this repository. If I moved over to the issues tab here, okay, and there is a rating feature, which for instance was assigned to me by this project manager of mine this morning, and I can come in and see of um, all the details that were provided, right? This was the feature for that uh, was just added, but here is another issue that has a lot more details about what needs to be done. The good thing is that unlike another place, like a Google document or an Excel sheet, where you're trying to track all of your requirements, there is no way that you can then track it back to the code that you're using. And that's exactly why GitHub gives you a place to collaborate on issues. In fact, if you go down here, you'll see that you can even use uh, mermaid.js in order to create these flow diagrams. You can mention a, a person, say Kyle, or I can mention an entire team here so that I can get a list of um, you know, things that they need to look at or something that they need to be aware of when I start working on this issue. Uh, another good thing is, suppose as a developer, once I started uh, working on this issue, that was again, let's assign this here, and let's imagine that a project manager was doing that. Suppose this was assigned to me and I had some question about it. GitHub gives you another place where you can collaborate right next to the pull request tab, which is called discussions. Now, with the discussions, I can easily create a new discussion and talk to any of my team member, have a QA. and a We see a lot of organizations using GitHub to collaborate. And um, in fact, to give you an example, the React team, when they uh, launched React 18, they used GitHub discussions to answer questions from their community following the launch so that community members could talk to the maintainers directly. Another cool feature of having your projects on GitHub is that you can leverage all of the open source projects on GitHub. So if you're working on something, say on mobile app development, you can simply search for Flutter samples in all of GitHub. And if I can browse here, you'll see if I look at the Flutter samples, you can then look at all these results. They can be sorted by best match or most folks, uh, most stars, and I can even share this across my teams. Once I find this result, I can quickly fork this within my organization. So your developers can easily quickly get started with this. Now, coming back to this issue that was assigned to me, let's understand it a bit more. Like I was saying, um, this is a online bookstore where um, you know I have some authors, I have the books, now, what we want to do is add a rating feature here. Now, as a developer, I have a couple of choices here right now. In the traditional way, uh, when a developer started working, one thing they could do is go to the local tab here and check out their code locally and start working on it. Another thing they can do is, in fact, spin up these code spaces. Uh, we have another colleague here who is going to go, go into a deep dive of code spaces, so I won't do that now. But it's very important to understand how quickly it is 
uh, it is uh, how quick it is and how fast and easy it is to pull up a code space and create that so that you can start working immediately. Um, just to give you a quick overview, this is what your code space would look like. And the dev container.json is the magic source, which we will be able to look at more later. Once I actually have started working and I push some changes to my code, and thing that gets created is a pull request. Now, a pull request, as you are all aware, is a comparison between two branches. So let's look at this pull request that was actually created by Dependabot. So this is really comparing the this branch with the main branch. And if I go into the files changed, what I'll quickly be able to see is a visual representation. So as a developer, when I do my code changes, use code spaces for quickly uh, making those changes without having to set up any pre-configured templates and getting started at the click of a finger, what I can now do is once I open a pull request, that is it, my job is done. So now a peer reviewer or someone else from my team can actually come in here, look at all these changes that were done and review the changes. Now at this point, they could either comment, they could approve, or they could even request changes. Another cool part here is, as soon as you open a pull request, if I go back to the conversation, you'll see that there are a bunch of steps that get triggered. And this is because of something called GitHub Actions. I won't spoil the fun again for uh, Actions because we have another deep dive demo. But just to give you an overview, Actions is our um, automation platform. So if you're used to using Jenkins, for instance, this is something that would be similar. The great part about Actions and what really differentiates us from everyone else out there is the GitHub Marketplace. If I go to the GitHub Marketplace here and you look at the Apps tab, for instance, you will see that we have about 600 uh, apps, um, which can be used for, you know, um, third party integrations. But if you go into the actions tab, you'll see that we have over 14,000 actions. These actions have actually been published by first party uh, integrations like um, Azure, like um, CircleCI, like Datadog, Red Hat. And all of these are so important because now all your developers have to do is pick up this action and use it within their workflow. The good thing is that Actions is today the number one CI provider on GitHub. And today, you know, your developers can go to market that much faster. GitHub Actions is the only CI CD tool out there that is purpose built for the way developers already work with in GitHub. So as you saw, it is right next to the code tab, which is very, very important. Um, one of the few things that you also might have noticed here is if I go back to the pull request that I have here, and let's just pull up this one that I have. There are a, there's a tab, there's a place here for reviewers. Now, one thing that we do is use a setting called code owners. And the code owner setting is, st is also stored right within your code. If you look at the dot github workflow over here and look at the workflows folder either you can define it here or you can define it right here so the code owners is you know you can define an individual or a team who will be assigned to any particular change that's made if you actually wanted to read further about it there's a lot of good documentation out there that we can leave you with now one of the few things that is that we should definitely look at is settings and look at how GitHub looks at branches. As you know, branches are the place where you can think of it as your sandbox environment, where you can experiment without fear of failure. So for instance, I have this main branch, which is the main branch, and I have a bunch of policies that I can now apply to this main branch just to ensure that there are no accidental changes. So the sanctity of your main branch is maintained. So you can see over here, I'm making sure that there are some branch protection rules. So anytime there is any change made to the main branch, so if I went back over here and looked at my pull request, you will see here 
that at least one approving review is required. And this is because of the branch protection rules that we've defined. Another good thing that GitHub gives you is a place for settings for environments. Now think of environments as generally deployable targets. And these are the ones that you can um, configure for say your staging or your dev or your production. And you can even define different things here like secrets. So not only can you have secrets at the organization level, you can have secrets at the repo level, but also over here at the environment level. So that if you're testing something in dev or staging, those secrets are not mixed with the ones in your production environment. One of the last things I'll mention here is OIDC. OIDC is very important because um, think about not having to store any of your credentials for your cloud service provider within a flat file or um, say even a vault. If you use OIDC, you can actually configure GitHub to directly communicate with your cloud service provider so that you don't need to maintain any of these secrets. So we are pushing the boundaries of secrets that much more. We will cover um, GitHub Advanced Security, of course, so I won't go into that into details, but this is a good overview to figure out, you know, what GitHub, how GitHub UI looks and all of the different uh, various offerings and features that GitHub offers you within a single pane of glass. That's it from me, folks, and thank you so much for your time and spending it here with the for the presentation and the demo. Uh, we have some more cool new things coming up next. Thank you.